so cool to be one of these people that like you guys stop. Just do whatever they want. All, all right. Like, just do whatever they want. And then at the end they're like, yeah, I guess I'll be a Catholic and then they like die a martyr death. My grandma did that. Like, okay. Here we go. Oh my gosh, that would suck. <laughs> Alright, gentlemen. Here we go. We can talk about all that just a little bit more because your head's like right this way. So we can come this way. <laughs> Alright, so our we're on chapter nine four. Chapter nine section four day. Oh. I'm sorry. It says all the circles. Of a circle. And the markings are important. Okay? So, what do these markings on these chords mean? Congruent. Those are parallel. Congruent. <laughs> congruent. congruent. How about congruent? Okay. And so, if these two chords are parallel, what does it mean about the arc from the chord? They're congruent. They're congruent. Did I say parallel? Yeah. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh, They're still on a beach in Florida. Okay? If I look at the chords and it says this blue chord and this blue chord, they're congruent right here. What does it then mean about the chord? Did I say chord? I meant arc. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and, of course, we're videotaping this one. I've been pretty good all day. They're congruent. So, theorem 9-4 says in the same circle or congruent circle. So, if we had this and this, they're congruent circles. It would, how would they define, okay, here's another candy question. How would they define a circle congruent to another circle? What is the most um, popular, mo most, um, 
the way that they're going to say this circle is congruent to this circle is by doing what? Measuring the diameter. Long. No. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, radius. The radius. They're going to give you two circles, diameter kind of. They're going to give you two circles and say, here are your two circles. This radius is four, this radius is four. And from this information, what can you conclude? That these are congruent. So that's what they're going to give you. Does that make sense? So we're looking for information that we can discern something from. All right, write down this theorem in your notebook, please. Not a bad one, right? Here. We don't care. David's sick for sure. I know David. Who's popping at me all night? <laughs> well, at, uh, I'm at mass because he's sick. Mike probably just didn't come because his Mike mom's was not fine there. on Sunday. Alright, write this down. I, I am relishing. And Jimmy's not sick. I, went to I have no idea where it is. <laughs> I went to some I church in Arizona. There's like a little church. And it was like all Mexicans and old people. Whoa, Tommy. You're so going to get me started on that. My relative's name right. I've Mine. never seen a kid there except this time I saw a kid. I've never seen a kid the whole city. So bad. Anybody need this back up here? Mm -mm. All right, we're going. Pat, you done? No, but yes. No, but yes. You're good. All right, here we go. I would like for you to draw this circle and ignore <laughs> the theorem right now. Just draw the circle, draw in the diameter, and draw the chord. You have choked so many times today. Alright, so you make sure you draw the diameter in. Draw your circle. Use your geo tracer to draw the circle, please. Draw in the diameter and then what you're doing and what's actually going to happen if you drew your diameter correctly, this chord that you're going to draw in right here will automatically be bisected by the diameter. So use the straight edge of your geo tracer to draw the chord in, and then let's talk about this. First selection for our chapter. All right, I got some candy. Oh, yeah. Mr. Erling and Mrs. Winter. <laughs> you do know that the video camera's on right there. <laughs> All right, here we go. Theorem nine five says that a diameter that is perpendicular to a chord bisects the chord and its arc. How am I going to know? that this chord is perpendicular to this diameter. How am I going to know, I see a lot of eyes that might still be drawing or don't want to answer this question. How am I going to know that the diameter is perpendicular oh. to the chord? That, because it goes through the middle and of the right angle side. All right, it goes through the middle of the chord. This. Right here. Don't forget these markings. This indicates that it's perpendicular. Or even if both, or, sorry, or if the top and the bottom are equal. Mm -hmm. If the or up. Well, yeah. That, that's going to be the result of it. Because even if, if, because if I had a chord that was diagonal, like if I had a chord like this that went through, intersected the diameter, this is going to be smaller than this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So the okay. Equal thing. Well, you have you have to have it marked up though, Pat. Oh. You have to have the perpendicular markings. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh huh. So what it says is here. I would like for you to copy this theorem down. Then we're going to apply them. I have five circles for you that you don't have to draw. Pat, 
David, Theron, go. Tommy? Are we good? Mr. Ball? Yes. You ready now? Yes. Can we just start class? Now let's read about what this theorem says. It says that chords that are equally distant from the center, so that means they're perpendicular to the radius, which might actually, I feel like, help us out here. So the chords that are equally distant from the center, which also means they're going to have to be perpendicular to the radius. Okay, they're equally distant from the center, so they're going to be perpendicular to the radius. The only way they're going to be equally distant from the center are congruent. Um, and congruent chords are equally distant from the uh, in the same circle or congruent circles. Congruent chords are equally distant. What can I get for you? How about a real pencil, buddy? <coughs> Equally distant from the center or centers. All right, now we're going to apply all of this. So I just brought you around a sheet. Please put your name on top. And I'd like you to take the next four minutes to just think. And if you don't know the answer, look back at the theorems that we just talked about today. X times two. But you don't know what the measure is. So on oh. on this one, it says what is the measurement of X Y? So what are you have? 
have to find a number, an actual measurement. What? Okay, go. Do it. Yes. The weird triangle thing is not actually that weird at all. Because what we had theorem, first one, right? We actually have to do like sine stuff. Not right now. Number seven. Nine, nine, cosine. Nine. I always. All right. Does everybody have this number one? Yeah. Oh yeah. We might have to do co. Actually, I think we can do 30, 60, 90 because it's a 60, right? Oh. Yeah. No. You don't have. You shouldn't have to sign anything. All right. Does every, who does not understand this one? All right. I'm focusing on. For those people in the video who are not going to watch it. Okay, this is a 3, 4, 5. So my is 4, xy, because this is congruent to this, is 8. All right, next one. I'm, we're going down to number 3. They're going to get a little bit harder each time. Next one, number 3, looks like this. So we want to find the length of OR. It gives us information. Let's go ahead and mark the triangle up. So, OT is 9, and RS, uh, what? RS is 18, so RT is 9. All right, what kind of triangle is this going to be? Okay, isosceles, what else are we going to know about this triangle? Zach? 40, 60, 90. Or 45, 45, 90. 45, 45, 90. Oh, yeah. Does that make sense? So, this is my hypotenuse. So, this is my, uh, yeah. This is my right angle right here. Does that make sense? So, if these two are 9, that means this angle and this angle have to be congruent. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, so I've got a 45, 45, 90. What's a 45, 45, 90 relationship? The hypotenuse square, to side. Square plus B squared plus C squared. It's squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. No, of course, like square root of 2 times It's times radical 2. It's this leg times radical 2, should, so it should be 9 radical 2. Okay, we could have, let's go ahead and stick it into Pythagorean theorem. 9 squared plus 9 squared is equal to c squared. This is 81 plus 81 is equal to c squared. Uh, what do we have? 162 is equal to c squared. Take the square root of both sides. I can factor out of there what? Um, 81 and 2, yeah. So we have 9 squared root of 2.
minus 120, which is what? 240. 240. Why do you want to go with that? Or degrees? Degrees, sorry. Okay, so now, what do you know? So, Pat, go on to the next one. Don't sit there and take a nap.
All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and mark it up with all the information that we know. If I do this one, can I get candy? Yeah, how's it? Sure. Ooh. Go. Because it's 1.5. For it's CD? Just, yeah, because it's whatever it's called. What would it be less if it's. It's not. It's whatever it's They're called. not in proportion. Oh, I thought they were. Why would it be a smaller length of this than a bigger thing? What? Can you do the same length? It's the thing that's uh, closer to the uh, length. Oh, no. that's true. That's true. So it could be like 20 or something. The reason they're not the same length is because so this one's moved in like the, the this section right here is moved in it's closer. Thank you. 